All right, guys, Stratum 6 Cosmos. So again, before we get started, just going to show off the teams that I used. Uh, some notable ones here are Selfie on the upper left there, and then Lena on the middle on the right-hand side. Those are against the Malboro stages. Uh, it's just some tech to help you deal with them. And then the hardest stage here is probably the bottom left, which is um, the one I use, Vein and Echo. That one is really tough on the score. So I went with Vein for free turns, and then Echo extends above our free turns for him. So it's pretty effective. All right, so we we'll just jump in into the run itself. Uh, this team, I'm going to go with the all requirements run again, meaning um, we're going to try to get everything in one go. So for this, you're going to need a light sword user. Uh, for me, I'm using Agnes here. Some alternatives for um, for light swords, you can use Furion. Onion Knight, Barts, Tidus is good too. And then maybe Ramza, but I wouldn't actually recommend them. You're going to need some heavy, heavy carries like Vayne or something like that if you're bringing uh, Ramza. And then the next other slot, you're going to need a Greatsword user, so we're bringing Zach. Some replacements for Greatswords would be Vayne, Sephiroth, we have Squall, and then Jet or maybe Cloud. And then the last requirement is a White Crystal user. So with some White Crystal supports that are good would be Sarah that we're bringing here, Lena, and then Aiko. Aiko synergizes really well with Vayne. Like I said earlier, she extends his buff by one turn. So technically he can get um, three free turns and then you know one turn after that that doesn't um, that adds up to your score. White Crystal DPS, the only notable one is twins. You could use Paladin and Cecil, but it's gonna be really dependent on the team. He's gonna need some carrying himself. And then the score is around 250k, which is about 75 turns if you take a lot of breaks. I had 14 breaks and 75 turns and I had I met I barely made the score requirement so that's about the ballpark range okay so this first wave here we got Lamia Queen uh, it's just the same as what we've seen before in Beach Bash first turn is Entice uh, you got Lena she can just negate that for you Agrius can uh, evade apparently but mine didn't but that's okay so we're gonna use Zack Zack trivializes this whole cosmos pretty well because it's so dangerous, um, a lot of mobs attacking. We have two waves of three mobs, and then he can just taunt everybody and take zero damage from them. So, and and he has a self heal from HP as well. So he's actually really, really effective in this uh, fight. I highly recommend Zach if you don't have him. And the, the only thing to watch out for is his mechanics. That one of the enemies has to be targeting Zach to get his high potency attacks. If nobody's actually targeting Zack, like if the boss is doing a lot of self-targeting, which they will be in this cosmos, then his potencies are gonna be uh, much, much lower. But you can just play around that, just, you know, Brave plus, HP plus, just kind of like pass your turn. So it's not too big of a deal. All right, so we're just gonna focus down the Lamia Queen really quickly, or else he's just gonna keep summoning back the adds. We're just gonna waste uh, turns and abilities. So here we go, Agri is coming in with the AoE finish. So wave 2, I did have to reset here. The worms are pretty relentless on their HP attacks. They're just going to keep doing um, their HP attacks. They just gain brave and then inflict HP attack. They don't actually do brave damage on you, so don't have to worry about keeping your brave high. You just want to burst at least one down as fast as you can, otherwise um, your units with low HP will probably die. So Agris is 7.6k is the lowest HP pool out of these units. So she will die if you don't kill him fast enough. And then Sarah's poison, double poison actually, doesn't actually do anything. Because they just gain brave after the poison. That does not matter. That's why Lena is so effective here. She heals so much over time. But if you just bring uh, Shiva... You know, we don't really care too much about the HP damage. You're going to lose the E3 passive if you have that, but then it's not going to make too big of a difference because we're going to heal over the long term. That's what Agris is here for. She fulfills the light sword requirement and she heals the party. So just 10% per turn, but it's going to add up and we're going to get, um, you know, we'll be fine by the end of the match. And then for Sarah, just try to space out her abilities. You don't have to go, you don't have to use, um, 
wound every turn because she she will run out by the end of the whole cosmos. So just space them out. And you can see here Agra's hitting the red bar, getting really low. You know, two more rounds from the worms and she's dead. So that's what happened to me on the first try. I had to reset. And then just try to burst them down. I saved some abilities. Like here I would just HP plaque with uh, Zag, but you don't want to do that. You actually want to use an ability and kill him before he does another HP attack. So you can just get through that and you don't have to waste time healing. Yeah, just use abilities and kill them before they can do too many attacks on you. This fight's pretty long. It took me a long time to actually beat it with this team. Okay, we got a wave 3. We got the Commander Beast. Um, this one is not too difficult. If you have Zac, you can taunt everybody and take no damage from them. The commander himself doesn't really do an HP attack ever. Um, he does an all attack, which is just a brave, uh, just a brave attack, which is called Comet Rain. And then I think maybe the turn afterwards he'll do an HP, but by then it's he's probably gonna die. So just want to focus most of your attacks on the commander beast himself. You can do the adds first if you're struggling. He won't actually res the adds until much later on, like a few turns down the road. So you could do that if you're struggling, but to beat it effectively, you just want to focus on the commander. And then you can see Agris is in trouble, so we're just going to taunt all the wolves here with Zack. Zack gains Brave after doing pretty much any skill. Even his HP+, plus, he gains some bravery back. So he's not in threat of getting broken. So that's why he's so good here. And, and he just takes zero damage from all the mobs. Which makes it a really safe run. Yeah, if you're going to bring units like uh, Sephiroth to you, he would also have AoE, which helps you with this wave and the first wave. So those units would be really good. Tidus and Furion, Onion Knight, pretty much all of them have some sort of splash or AoE. So very effective. Oh, and Squall as well. But Squall is in trouble of running out of abilities. I did use Squall initially in my run. I used um, Squall, Agrius, and Lena actually, but I barely met the score requirement. We finished at like 254k. Turn 76, 14 breaks. So I brought Zack instead for that reason to help my team have a much safer run, less breaks, that, that kind of thing. Hey, okay, almost done on the beast here. Yeah, you can see Zack does regain some bravery after HP plus. Very useful to help him getting broken, although he gets zero damage. Anyway, if it's getting attacked pretty much. And then, yeah, the Commander Beast doesn't resummon the adds just yet. Maybe the next turn or a couple of turns later, he would resummon. But just want to kill him before that time. Okay, the last wave, Hill Wyverns. These are actually, in my opinion, the tankiest wave, the hardest wave. That's why we are bringing. A friend unit to help us deal with that. We got friend Squall. With friend Squall, you just want to spam Render Kukin. You could use the EX, but then you're gonna miss out on the 100% AOE damage on the first turn. If you actually do the math behind it, um, it's very close. But five Renzos would actually beat out one um, Assault Trigger and four Renzos, especially when you're using them in Summon. So the plan here is just to nuke them down and summon right away because if you wait they're gonna self buff and when they self buff they're gonna remove physical weakness by uh by one stage so right now they are weak to physical but if you wait and that you let them get the buff off right away they're not gonna they're gonna not be weak to physical anymore so summon a sap and then summon the friend squad let them do all the renzos dish out as much damage as you can we got lucky there, or Agrius. She got double paralysis, which let, lets us get another free round of, you know, barrage on them. But Agrius is really good here, not only for physical weakness, but also the um, AoE silence on the EX ability. So after the Worms buff, they would just spam AoE brave attacks. I've actually never seen them do HP attacks. They just spam AoE brave attacks. But Agrius can just silence them and make them miss a turn. So it helps a lot in terms of making score and getting faster runs. 
And then Zach still does decent damage, even though he's not getting targeted here because of the physical resistance. But really, you want to wait for his taunt to come online before you use Rush Assault. Because it can do a lot more damage even without the physical weakness. And then we're just going to try to save Agri's EX ability. You don't have to use it right there. Because they're already paralyzed and she's almost cap brave anyway. If you can space out your abilities, it's going to help you a lot in this fight. And we have six debuffs, the full amount of debuffs on the boss. Complete shutdown. They can't do anything right now. Yeah, that's why I like this team. It's very debuff heavy, but it shuts them down quite a bit. Okay, for Zach, we're just going to throw a Chain Slash there, get a Taunt for next turn. And the Aggers again going to save her ability EX for the next run after they buff themselves. And then Sarah, we're down to three Moonlights. Uh, those are worth the extra charges, but if you don't have those extra charges, don't worry, because we're not actually going to use them in this run. Sarah's going to finish uh, without those charges just fine. And here we go, the AoE 100% on the EX. And then here comes Agrius EX ability. Very powerful still. 100% as well and also shuts them down. And then we're just going to finish them off with Zack. So the birds actually never got to attack once. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.